Hey guys, welcome back. For this video tutorial, I'm going to start working on a sensor that is a compass which is HMC5883. Now, to gain more knowledge, to have a better perspective regarding the sensor, let's go to controleverything.com and here search for this particular sensor that is HMC5883. As you can see, it's a 3 axis digital compass and these are some of its more precise features. Now you can also purchase the sensor from here, from this website. I will be interfacing the digital compass HMC5883 with a Raspberry Pi and a Java code and I will be going on the research tab and then on clicking the Java code sample you can download the code sample as a zip file from here. Also you can have the code from GitHub and the repository is control everything community. Now, Collect some hardware to make some connections for the working and the interfacing and let's face it. In the part of hardware connection setup, first of all the requirement is of a Raspberry Pi which you can see on my screen and these are the GPR pins of the Raspberry Pi. Now this here is an I2C shield. It's available on the website controleverything.com and the real part of using this I2C shield is to make connections with other I2C devices and the connection should be a lot easier, that's why. Now gently place the I2C shield over the GPI pins of the Raspberry Pi and make a connection. The next part is to bring the sensor that is digital compass HMC5883. Now this here is a connecting cable. Now make sure that while making connection among the sensor and the cable, the ground wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor and same goes for the I2C shield. Now what do we require is to power up the Raspberry Pi and for that we require a micro USB cable just like this and gently insert it over the power jack. The last part is to provide the internet connection and there are two ways. The first way is to provide an ethernet cable or a LAN cable as you know and gently insert it over the ethernet jack. The second part is to provide a wireless USB nano adapter. Now this is very useful. Uh, it might save your day also. Now as we are done with the connections part for the hardware we require for the video. Now what do we require is to have a look over the code and let's go ahead. Now in the interfacing part, the first requirement is to get the code for the Java and so log into github.com and here we have to search for the official repository that is control everything community and here we go and this is HMC5883 sensor and this is the Java code we are looking forward but let's have a look over the instructions we need to follow. It says that we have to download and install Pi4j library on the Raspberry Pi and Pi4j.com. This link is the official link from where we can have the relevant library installed and all the relevant information, steps, guidances, everything is there. Please note it down. Now this here is the command uh, to compile the Java code and this here to run the Java code. Note it down also. And in the Java code, let's explore, it's a .java extension file. And you notice in the code, we have imported some of the Pi4j libraries as you can see. And we have created a public class named HMC5883. And we have bus.cut device which shows the sensor address that is 0x20. Now in the writing part, which is the writing section, we have selected configuration register A having address 0x00 and we are sending the normal measurement configuration data rate output equal to 0.75 Hz. And then we are selecting mode register having address 0x02 and the continuous measurement mode command is sent here which is 0x00. After that we want to get the data back from the sensor and this is called the reading part and we are reading 6 bytes of the data from 0x03 as you can see it's the magnetic data for perpendicular axis x, y and z. Now after that we have the conversion of the data takes place for the 3 magnetic axis which is according to the data provided or the guidance is provided in the data sheet for HMC5883. At the very end, we have to show the output on the screen or the values we got for magnetic field in X, Y and Z axis as you can see, it's the raw values. So these are the characteristics of this particular code. Now what we're going to do is to show the working, the practicality of this particular code. Now in the working environment section, the first step is to copy this entire code of the Java and then go to the Terminal for the Raspberry Pi and here create a new file hmc5883.java which is the extension and here paste the entire Java code and then save it. What we have to do is to compile the code which is the command as you can see on my screen and here we go. 
the code is being compiled the compilation is done now this is the command to run the java code and we have the magnetic field values for x y and z axis as you can see the values are almost constant the raw values but let's have it now when i bring a bar magnet near the sensor and run the command you can see the value changes yeah when i'm moving the bar magnet in different directions the value also changes differently and the values for x y and z responds in a different manner for every time just like that yeah that's correct so this is how the sensor works now what we gonna do is to show the features and the applications for the digital human compass that is HMC 5883 the HMC 5883 is a surface mount multi-chip module designed for low field magnetic sensing with a digital interface for applications such as low cost compassing and magnetometry the HMC 5883 includes our state of the art high resolution HMC 118x series magneto resistive sensors plus an ASIC containing amplification automatic degaussing strap drivers offset cancellation and a 12-bit ADC that enables 1 degree to 2 degree compass heading accuracy applications for HMC 5883 include mobile phones notebooks consumer electronics auto navigation systems and personal navigation devices the sensor the digital compass HMC 5883 is available and can be purchased from the website that is control everything.com and you can have the code from the resource tab and after that you can have the code as a zip file from that you can also have the code from github repository and it's called control everything community now i would just like to make it clear that in case any part if you have any queries you can reach us on control everything.com and put your comments on the community page of this website for blogs and articles you can have a look over on instructables.com for us and if you want to subscribe more video tutorials like this go to our youtube channel now i hope you enjoyed this video and have a good one yourself thanks a lot for watching